we have a military code of conduct. Okay. And if you want, I'll give you a copy. Sure. Because for us, we said, when we were beginning these fightings, I say to my guys, either we are fighting for right. If not, I'll not go. Rape will be punished by um, La Pen de Mort. Farin is caught, death penalty. And it's known. And two weeks ago, two officers were killed for that. Two of your soldiers? Yes. Yeah. Officers, not soldiers, officers. You, you executed them? Yes. They went somewhere, somewhere and they drank uh, this local, um, local beer and they didn't control themselves. Then they went in a house where they were a, a non-married woman. They slept there. India, Mugulev. So, so they, they are drunk. They are drunk. They did the rape. I'm sorry. They did the rape and they are drunk. And then we called the um, the military uh, court. court. Yes, we said now in our code of conduct, if you rape now, and we kill them there before soldiers. Who has to execute them then? Their captain? Other soldiers. Other soldiers? Yes. yes. At the same rank soldiers. The same rank. Okay. Yes. They were second lieutenant and they were killed by second lieutenants. Hmm. Yeah. That's the way. It was a, a, a punishment and it accepted and it is stated in our code of conduct. Looting by arms. It's a crime. We will use also a weapon against you. Looting without arm, now you can be in a prison for a such time. But if you used weapon to rob or to loot, mm -hmm. now we will use weapon against you. There are strong measures I know, mm -hmm. but also they help me in the four years of fighting. All these guys know very well that it exists, but they can't tell because they want to see a rebellion where there is no clothes, where all women are raped, mm -hmm. are raped where we are, we are looting or doing. That's what they expect to see. And when they come, they don't see a such kind of, you see, uh, behavior. I think for them it's not good. But what I know is that we are doing, we are doing a war for liberation, mm -hmm. even not for um, minerals resources. Mm -hmm. No. Some people call this there is a, a war against. Uh, some people call this a war for minerals or an economic war. Yes, there. <laughs> how can you fight for your your, your own your own, your own uh, <laughs> minerals? <laughs> your own resources. They are mine resources. They are our resources, and. In 2003, I was appointed um, uh, Brigadier General and the in charge of the North Kiv region. I would have been in charge without any fights. If it was only for minerals, no, I would have not come here. It's a way to, to, div, uh, to divide, uh, to divide, to deviate the minds. You see, but we, are, we you cannot fight for your 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 minerals. What are, what are the Western interests here in Congo? Do you think? Only what I can say is that they want to control the leadership, then take what they want to take. They want Congo be led by a corrupted man, where they can do what they want. That's what I understand. Because what they are doing in Congo today is only corruption at the high level. You see? Yes. Now, minerals in Congo are exploited by China, by Belgium, by South Africa, by... Maybe, I don't know, but the principles are one. Uh, by France, the petrol. Petrol is under France. Uh, um, uh, 
Silva and the other, no. Iranium and, and America control. Copa and uh, Belgium. Um, um, diamonds of um, Kasai and uh, Jew Jewish. Pet uh, yeah, petrol under France and others under China and uh, South Africa. Gold, South Africa. The Congolese people have never ever benefited from their own resources. You can see it on the ground. How can a country so rich like Congo can be like you? You, you are seeing it. There is no salary. There is no roads. There is no infrastructure for a so big and so rich country. So you ask me if we benefit. No. <laughs> but also I cannot say that it's from these countries. We are not benefiting because we, are, we don't have leadership. Because Western countries are exploiting in other countries like Angola. But Angola is building. It's raising his economy. Western countries, I, I saw Arab countries under Western fi financial group like uh, um, Emirates, like um, um, this um, Qatar and so on. They are, they are, they are under Western financial um, organizations. But they are, they, are, they are raising. It's not a, a matter of this country coming to, to exploit Congo. It's a matter of contract we are doing with them. We are not serious. There is no leadership. Throughout history, um, since, the, since independence, the leaders that have taken charge have always um, made themselves rich through corruption and, and, and then left the people poor. How, how do you know, how do people know for sure that that's not going to happen if, under your leadership? Let us, think, let us uh, say that people are discouraged. How are they going to do that? Because since 1960 and before 1960, when Belgium were here, they, they didn't get anything from Belgium colony and from the Congolese government. Because even if you can see what, uh, what um, British colony got from the colony, what French colony got from French, and what we got from Belgium, it's very different. Maybe the people are thinking that they are not the owners of these um, resources. resources. Because since Belgium were here, and today there is no any resource income for the people. But we think that today, when we are talking about changes, when we are saying that we cannot accept Chinese like Chinese contract, when we are talking about France, the way he's exploiting the petrol in Western Congo, People are thinking that maybe we can do something. But also when they think about the power of Kinshasa, the presence of the UN here, they think that we are not in the right way because UN is the right. That's what the people can think. But the one who knows very well what's going on, like some leaders in Kinshasa, Kadas, in Goma Bukavu, now they know very well that we are bringing changes, and we will. It's a mass.